Hello and welcome everyone to this, the fourth in the series of Legends of West Indies Cricket on Cricket 360 Friday Night Line. In this segment, we look at Guyana's Shivnarain Chandrapal. Back in February 1992, Guyana's Starbrook News editorialized Indian newspaper on the then 17-year-old left-handed batsman, right-arm leg-break bowler Shivnarain Trandopol, now West Indies batting legend as follows. Let us be the first West Indian newspaper to editorialize on a young man who one day may make the whole region proud. It is the earliest of days, in fact his first match for Guyana, and we don't want to swell this young Trandopol's head. But in the two days he was on shore at border, he showed a, glim a glimpse of the astonishing eye, technique, timing and appetite for runs which one associates with future cricket greatness. Let us wish the young man well as he embarks on what we have every reason to hope will be a brilliant career in regional and in due course international cricket. A year and a half later, the October-December 1993 Caribbean Quarterly magazine trumpeted on its, cover mag on its magazine cover, Shivnara and Trandopol, one for the future. These predictions certainly have come to pass, as today the Guyanese left-handed batting sensation Tiger, as he was fondly and is fondly called, is considered one of the pillars of West Indian batting in his time. Blessed with intense concentration, a steady head and patience as a batsman, he has consistently been the gutsy and steady accumulator of runs, wearing down the best bowlers the world over. Yet in contrast, we, which we witnessed his 69 ball century when he smacked Australia's attack to every part of Borders Cricket Ground in 2003 while making the second fastest Test 100 by a West Indian uh, to Viv Richards blistering 56 ball century against England in Antigua in 1986. And in a famous limited over international against Sri Lanka at Trinidad's Queen's Park over, he won the match for West Indies by hitting the last two balls of the game bowled by fellow legend Chaminda Vass, 4-4 four, four, and a huge six, setting off scenes of Trini and West Indian jubilation that the world is, has become and is accustomed to. His batting stance, very unorthodox, described as crab-like. His back lift short and compact. His footwork precise. His powers of concentration and determination immense were the main characteristics that make up the unique style of this batting legend. It is as if his wicket was the most important asset he possessed when he was at the crease. I am here to stay is the message opposing bowlers and captains know they are up against. His 49 knockouts in test matches bear this out most appropriately. Not only was he unique in his crab-like batting stance, but also in the way he marked his guard at the crease with the bail and the use of sun reflector patches under his eyes, especially later in his career. His dedication and commitment to fitness training and endless hours of practice were also testament to his great love for the game. Trandopol refers to his phenomenal ability of concentration as an immense skill and unique gift, a divine gift bestowed by Lord Shiva, quote unquote. On average, he faced an amazing 100 balls in every test innings he played. Only Brian Lara comes close with 85 among his fellow teammates over the years. Of note is the responsibility of senior batsman that Chandrapal took on in the bleak period of West Indies cricket. Between 2005 and 2008, he amassed over 3,000 runs at an average of 62.72. And in the six-year period after Lara's retirement in 2007, his heroics in the Test Arena placed him among the top batsmen in the world. During that period, he scored 15 of his 27 centuries at an average of 90. Sorry, of his... 30 centuries. 
against Australia in 2012 in the series where he reached the milestone of 10,000 runs, second only to Brian Lara to do so for the West Indies. He had scores of 103 not out, 12, 94, 69, 68 and 69 for an average of 346. No other West, West Indian batsman has anywhere near that total. Trader Paul made his debut against England at Border in Guyana in March 1994 for the West Indies senior men's team. And then he had his last test against England at Kensington Oval Barbados in May 2015, 21 years later. An international career that spanned over two decades, but which some say sadly came, well, sadly came to an abrupt and unceremonial end and from which he was essentially forced to retire in January 2016. This, however, did not stop him from continuing his cricket career as he continued to play for Guyana and for Lancashire, where he played his last game in August 2018 at the age of 44. Tranopol ranks as the 8th highest run-getter overall in Test matches. His ODI debut was against India in India in October 1994, while his last ODI was against Pakistan in Pakistan in March 2011, where he top scored with 44. In his brief T20 international career of just 22 games, I believe, he, he made his debut against New Zealand in New Zealand in February 2006, and his last was against South Africa in South Africa in May 2010. During his long career, Chandrapal accumulated 11,867 test runs, second to Lara's 11,953 with 30 centuries and 66 half centuries in 64 tests, in 164 tests, sorry, with a highest score of 203 not out and an average of 51.37. Lara, by contrast, was 52.88 and Viv Richards 50.23. In the ODI format of the game, he scored 8,778 runs in 268 matches for the West Indies with a high score of 150 at an average of 41.60 with 11 centuries and 59 half centuries. In 2003-04, in commemoration of the 75th anniversary since the West Indies played its first test match in 20, 1928, Trandopol was selected among an illustrious group of 30 West Indian cricketers as the best of all time, all of whom we will feature in this series. He and Brian Lara were the only two active players at the time. It is safe to say that Shiv, Chandras, Tiger, all names by which he is called the world over, has had a cricket addiction ever since he first held a cricket bat in Unity Village East on the East Coast, De on East Coast Gam Demerara, Guyana, as a little boy. He credits his dad, Kim Raj, at every turn for instilling in him from a very young age the need for dedication and long hours of practice, which have become the hallmark of his work ethic. He was taken by his father to the Everest Club in Georgetown, but lack of opportunity forced him to Demerara Cricket Club, for whose under-16 he played at the age of 10. It was a family friend, Sheikh Mohammed, who advised Kemra to take his talented son to the most prestigious club in the country, Georgetown Cricket Club. Interestingly, Tranopol did not start off with aspirations of being a batsman. Actually, sorry, he started off with aspirations of being a bowler. As a right time leg spinner, he topped the Guyana Red Stripe Cup bowling average in 1994. In fact, in his first test match against England at Border in 1994, he bowled 16 overs of right arm spin, didn't get a wicket for uh, an okay rate of. Uh, with two maidens and um, 49 runs in the West Indies victory by an innings and 44 runs. His teammates in that match included the likes of Lara Haynes, Richardson, Adams, Ambrose and Walsh. He scored 62 out of 556, which included 167 by Lara and 137 by Jimmy Adams. Not bad for a debut as a 19-year-old.
His first notable impact on Test cricket was that of being the batting part partner of Brian Lara when Lara broke Sagari Sobers' record of 365 not out in the fifth and final test against England in 1994. Lara went on to make that famous 375, sharing a 219-run stand with Tranderpol, who was left not out on 75. Tranderpol scored his first century, test century in his 19th test match, this after scoring 15 half centuries in the preceding 18 matches. In the third of a five-test series against India in 1997, he made 137 not out at Kensington Oval Barbados. The August 16, 1974 born Guyanese had the burden of West Indies captaincy, captaincy thrust upon his soul, shoulders in 2005, seemingly being expected by the selectors to emerge as a super captain. One bright spot in his captaincy reign was his double century in his debut in the role versus South Africa and Ghana in the first test of that series. His captaincy stint did not last long as he resigned in 2006 to focus on what he does best. best. Bat, bat, and yes, bat. His best first class score was 303 not out versus Jamaica for Ghana. Tranopol is one of only a a few to have gone 1,000 minutes in test cricket without conceding his wicket and to score half centuries in seven consecutive test innings. In 2012, he became the second West Indian after Brian Lara, as mentioned before, to score 10,000 or more runs in test cricket and was the number one ranked on the ICC test match batting rankings. In 2008, he was Wisden and ICC Player of the Year. In 2003, he featured with his Guyanese counterpart Ramnare Sawan scoring 104 in successfully chasing a world record 418 to win in the fourth innings of the final test match against Australia. Some of the, the major teams this legend has represented during his illustrious career include the West Indies, Derbyshire, Durham, Guyana, the Guyana, Amazon Warriors, Kulna, Royal Bengals, Royal Challengers. Bangalore, Uva Next, Stanford Superstars, Warwickshire and Lancashire where he played his final first class game in August 2018 at the age of 44 as we mentioned before. Not contented, he went on to blast 210 in a 76 ball rampage in the Adam Stanford, Adam Stanford Cricket for Life T20 tournament at the Caribe Lumber Ball Park in St. Martin. Hitting a record-breaking 25 fours and 13 sixes, the 44 year olds and in helped his side to 303. In partnership with Dwayne Smith against USA's Mad Dogs team, who scored 54 of 28 deliveries, his mama total helped his side to a 192-run victory over Mad Dogs. Then it was on to a T20 Masters tournament in Mumbai, India, where he played for the West Indian Legends in March 2020. Like father, like son, his 17-year-old son Tejnarain Brandon, left-handed also, is following in his dad's footsteps, having made his debut in 2013 for the senior Guyana team in the regional tournament against the Leeward Islands. Flashes of his father's patience and powers of concentration were evident. In September of 2012, father and son posted an unbeaten an unbeaten partnership of 256 in a 40 over game at the Unity Ground, East Coast, Guyana, for the Gandhi Youth Organization against Transport Sports Club. Senior Tranopol getting 143 not out and junior 112 not out. But playing for your country alongside your son must have been most special in March 2013 when the pair teamed up for Guyana against Trinidad and Tobago at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain. Trinidad, making it the second time a father and son have played first-class cricket together in the Caribbean after Sir Larry Constantine and his father LeBron played in September 20, 1922, representing Trinidad and Tobago versus Barbados in the then British Guyana, some 90 years earlier. Trinidad is, is a recipient of Guyana's third highest national award, the Cacique Crown of Honor, and has a street named after him, Shiv Trinidad Drive in jo 
Joshan. Probably not of note as it should be is Strandopol falling short by a couple of runs in the second test at Lords in 2004 against England, which I might I, I had the huge displeasure of witnessing live in what was Brian Lara's last test match at Lords. For what would have been his second century of the match at Lords, a rare and unique occur occurrence at the home of cricket. Alas, one Tino Best fell to the taunts of Andrew Flintoff when challenged by the English player to aim for the windows in the pavilion. So said, so done, as Tino Best hmm, proceeded to offer an almighty swipe of whoop to the heavens, putting an end to the possibility and the West Indian innings. I call that the worst of best. I just had to put that in there. In August 2018, the University of the West Indies announced that the former West Indies captain would be conferred with the Honorary Doctor of Laws during the university's three days graduation exercise in October. And in September 2018, Cricket West Indies drafted Trandopol to its West Indies Ambassador Program for the 2018 Women's World T20 in, in the Caribbean. In January 2020, the Guyana Cricket Board officially handed over the Shivnar and Tarnapur all-weather practice facility to the Everest Cricket Club. A couple more highlights of his in career include in April, May 20, 2002, where in a hot streak he scored three centuries in four tests against India. And West Indies won the series. One of his unique records include batting unbeaten for 25 hours during that test series. Of interest, there are five cricket-themed calypsos about Trandopol in the book History of West Indies Cricket Calypsos Through Calypsos that traces some 215 cricket-themed calypsos from 1926. Two of these are by Dave Martins and the Trade Winds. Well, we've come to an end of another segment. We hope that you have enjoyed another in the series, Legends of West Indies Cricket. In the next episode, we will be looking, taking a look at Sir Larry Constantine, one of the trailblazers in early West Indies cricket. I thank you for viewing. You can see this on our previous shows again on our Cricket 360 Facebook page. Bye.